Smith at the strong cross zone. Roger. Far left hand side. 500, 0.5 right. 0.5 right. Got an impact, center of mass, nice shot. 600. Going to 600, put 3.8 on the gun. Got it. Far right target. Far right target, send it. Impact, center of mass, nice shot. Got Going it. to 700. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Nicholas Irving, and he is a former U.S. Ranger and master sniper. And we welcome in right now Sergeant Irving. Hello, sir. Hello. And uh, the author of a, a great new book, The Reaper. It's an autobiography of one of the deadliest special ops snipers in uh, our military's history. Uh, 33 confirmed kills, mm -hmm. uh, five tours of duty, two in Afghanistan, three in Iraq. My God, let me just say thank you for your service to our thank country you. first and foremost. Um, this is, uh, you know, um, comes on the heels of the Sniper, the mm -hmm. American Sniper movie, which I just saw over the weekend with my oh, yeah. son. You saw the movie? I did. I did. Accurate t uh, portrayal of what you guys in that position go through? Definitely. I think the uh, they really touched on not that we're out there stalking people. It's more of an Overwatch position, and my, you know, my entire job was to overwatch the troop movement on the ground, make sure that, you know, nothing happened to those guys. And if anything popped up, it was my duty to take those guys out. And, and it's, it's so important. Now, what do you, I, I know you've commented on, on Michael Moore, um, but it's not only Michael Moore. I wish it was just Michael Moore because yeah. you could write him off. Uh, it's a lot of people on, on the left, uh, movie producers and others who have called this a, uh, a neocon fantasy, a pro-war movie, a uh, glorification, and, and, and of course talking about how snipers shoot people in the back and they're not to be made into heroes. When you hear all that stuff, what are you thinking? It's irritating a little bit, um, especially when it comes from a person who has not been overseas and, and gone through the things we've gone through. Um, it, as far as shooting people in the back, I've never done that. Well, there was one guy, but he was uh, going after my uh, security force right. that he had a right. ID or a suicide vest on. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. I mean, that. Uh, I don't think that even, uh, I would never even think negatively of that in your position, having seen the movie, because, you know, if someone's running with the, towards your troops and his, his back is to you, you got to stop him, whether it's his back or his front. Oh, he yeah. doesn't know the difference, you exactly. know. It's not like he has a chance to see you and defend yeah. himself yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. But but do you so do, so you don't have any regrets as as Kyle had said he doesn't have any regrets had before he passed away Newsmax did an interview with him mm -hmm. that he never had regrets he didn't think about the the people he killed mm -hmm. um, you know he thought about other things and the, the people back home and what you know what what the war did to his family and mm -hmm. to himself and to other soldiers on his side mm -hmm. the ones he couldn't save the soldiers he couldn't save but you, do you have any regrets over the, the the bad guys that you shot. No, I don't have any regrets. I only have one regret, and that's uh, the guy I could not save, uh, Corporal Benjamin Cobb. I wouldn't be here today, and uh, my reconnaissance team wouldn't be here today. He saved our lives when we were pinned down by a uh, Chechen sniper for three hours. The book. Talk about what you what you relay in the book. I mean, is it is it um, your tours of duty? Is it specific kills? Is it also what what was so prominent in the movie uh, about American Sniper? The, your your private life, your home life, your family life, and what how it is to come back. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of uh, everything. Uh, it mainly focuses on uh, the guys I was around and the, why I protected those guys and why I felt the need to do that. Um, the guys who paid the ultimate sacrifice, a few Ranger brothers, and uh, not so much on the killing aspect. There's a few really good ones in there, um, especially like the nine-hour firefight surrounded by uh, an entire village, and we debated on you know killing ourselves so we wouldn't get captured. Um, talks a little bit about uh, a few missions that were really uh, high up there and I just want to I guess uh, shed light on what the Ranger Battalion does and the personal life yeah that's in there too and the struggles I went through when I got out the, the first two years I was a, a pretty much a raging alcoholic and it's very secluded and and how have you recovered how have you oh yeah how, how, what 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 was the strength that led you to be sitting here with me right now uh, I had a dream one night of what the father figure of our sniper section, Annabel Santiago. He came to me in a dream and pretty much told me to stop. And I, I stopped, and now I'm just taking care of uh, my, my three kids, that is all four, le four, leg, four legged kids. That is great. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four, four legged kids. Uh, my you, dogs. dogs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. That's fine. I, oh, I yeah. have a four legged dog uh, oh, yeah. as well, kid. You could call him, I guess he's part of the family. Uh, let me ask you. Um, You've been very. I, I want to play Howard Dean first of all. Can we play that Howard Dean cut? Because he he was very outspoken, you know, uh, and he blank, made blanket statements about the movie and about the troops. Mm -hmm. And now he's trying to walk it back a little bit. Let's watch. Is your reaction is something which I've almost never done in politics. I'll apologize to the veterans. I haven't seen the movie, 
and I think it was wrong. I talked to a lot of people about it. I, I make no apologies to all the thousands of right-wing nutjobs who have been twittering me with nasty language, but I do apologize to the veterans. We owe them a lot, and I think this movie was much more nuanced than I thought. But you'll not take the word nutbags back. No, I don't <laughs> I have any use of, for the people who tweeted me all weekend and used a lot of bad language. I, they're chicken hawks, and I have no respect for oh. them. So you accept his apology, at least, or not? I don't think I do. Uh, I think there's a, a really big disconnect with our politicians, and not all of them, but some of them. There's a big disconnect. Um, they, they can't relate to some of the things we go through in the struggles. You're, you're touching a very sensitive topic when you make, you know, I guess, uh, ridiculous comments and statements. There's 22 vets a day who kill themselves every single day, and there's a, there's a fine line about, I guess, what you say about the troops and the war. I don't think it's a war, uh, a, a war movie. It's more or less the struggles that we go through and the family goes through. Uh, it's not really a, a shoot 'em up movie. And um, they should be quiet unless they could understand, unless exactly. they've been there. Uh, you're very outspoken on your blog, if I'm correct, uh, about um, the media. Mm -hmm. And you said, first we were all going to die of Ebola. Mm -hmm. ISIS is coming to get us. Mm -hmm. They're not here yet. Even weigh in on Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Talk about what, do you believe the media is, is, uh, is out to cause panic. Do you believe the media has a driven agenda? Talk about that. I do. I think there's somewhat of a driven agenda um, to, you know, shift focus from something that needs to be talked about, and they shift focus onto the big Ebola outbreak. I mean, there was uh, a, a few things going on with ISIS, and I was waiting for those guys at my front door, just waiting for them. It never happened. Um, never got Ebola. I was in the, the Houston airport at the same time the Ebola thing happened. Never got that. I just think that they need to start focusing time on important topics. Such as, what would you like to see more coverage of? Mm, as of right now, the VA scandal, uh, getting, getting help for our troops, to get the guys that come back. I think it's just there's no reason why 22 people should die every single day because they don't have that treatment. So the media has an agenda, and it's not necessarily in the best interests of, uh, of the people. On, yeah, what's going on right now, and that's a pretty hot topic. Listen, God bless you, really, yeah, and thank, thank you, you, and I'm glad you're, you're well, and thank that's you. the most important thing. And, you know, when you talk about uh, considering to kill, kill you guys killing yourselves, not when you got home, not, which was a problem, mm -hmm. obviously, but there on the field so oh, as yeah. not to get captured. It's all in the book, folks. The Reaper. Uh, and there he is, uh, autobiography of one of the deadliest special ops snipers, Nicholas Sar Sergeant Nicholas Irving. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, if you saw American Sniper or if you didn't, this is a completely different experience. So I urge you to get the Reaper. You'll be fascinated. Uh, up next, the Molesburg panel. Don't go away.